Here are impossible UFC injuries that actually happened. Starting with Evangelista Santos, who suffered multiple skull fractures after MVP landed a flying knee. It's no surprise Santos never returned to the cage. To see a shattered skull, you need an X-ray. To see George Mann's hematoma, you just need an eye. Maybe just one eye. Even though it looked like he had a second head, Mann remained calm about it. It was a great shot that he caught me with. In the moment of time, it was very hard to uh, to see. Something easy to spot happened to Joanna Jedrce, who looked like she had just escaped from Area 51. You can see a punch gets landed directly right in the middle of that hematoma. This massive hematoma was caused by Wei Li Chang during their title fight. And when they had a rematch, the result was no surprise. UFC fighters may look like they are made out of steel, but I predict that through years of fighting, their bodies would wear down until they unluckily became as fragile as a glass. And here is the shining example. Anderson Silva used to be the middleweight goat until his devastating injury appeared. Silva threw a casual leg kick that Weidman perfectly checked, causing Silva's tibia and fibula to snap instantly. Ironically, seven years after breaking Silva's leg, Chris Weidman suffered absolutely the same fate. Weidman threw a kick that collided with Hall's knee, causing his leg to snap in the first seconds of the fight. The injury left Whiteman's leg visibly broken in half. This tragic parallel to Silva's injury solidified it as one of the worst breaks in UFC history. Yet Corey Hill experienced the worst one. When he threw a kick that landed awkwardly, both his tibia and fibula snapped, resulting in compound fracture. His opponent didn't even know why the fight stopped. You could feel the oh shit moment when he turned around and saw the leg and feel the regret in his voice. I wanted to beat him with every bit of my heart, but I, I, I don't want to see him like this, man. Seeing the six foot six, 300 pound Russian giant's knee bent at 90 degree angle is one of the most impossible to witness leg injuries ever to occur in the heavyweight division. Let's move on to the upper limb. A similar injury happened to Joey Pfeiffer who suffered an impossible elbow injury. While fighting for a UFC contract, Pfeiffer braced himself during a takedown defense, causing his elbow to bend in an impossible way. Although the injury ended the fight, it didn't end his dream of joining the UFC. A few months later, he earned his contract in the most spectacular fashion. Be Joe Pfeiffer. Be excited to be here. Be fired up to fight. Try to finish the fight. Try to win. Be Joe Pfeiffer and you will get into the UFC. To top it off, Dana White bought him a house. He told me that he was he was about to be homeless, so that ain't gonna happen. Antonia Noguera probably said the same thing. Impossible, not gonna happen. But found himself in a completely different situation. Trapped in a Kimura submission by Frank Mir. Refusing to tap, Noguera's arm was twisted until it snapped. The injury was so severe that it required multiple screws and lengthy recovery. His arm just gives loose. Yeah. I just feel pop, 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 and it opens. Average Polish guy with that pop, pop, pop translate like Katastrofana povreda. Just 14 seconds into the fight, Dusko Todorovic slammed Shota Gwasela, but instead of a normal judo move, we witnessed one of the nastiest elbow injury in MMA history. What I don't understand is how the hell did Guasalia make a comeback in just five months? Let's shed some light on the darker side of the fight life. UFC fighters are often portrayed as masculine athletes in peak condition. Yet the sacrifices they make are rarely discussed. Starting with John Jones, who suffered one of the most unexpected injuries. His big toe was visibly dislocated. With the bone poking through the skin, Jones continued fighting only realizing the injury during the post-fight interview. Right, I'm here with the champ. Oh my god. Uh oh, oh, he's got a broken foot. His ability to fight through such a gruesome injury showcases impossible resilience, or perhaps the power of adrenaline, or something entirely else. However, Jones owes the universe nothing. During his fight with Thiago Santos, he tore multiple ligaments in both legs with his oblique kicks. Very controversial move. But if someone's trying to give us brain damage, we believe that it's an even trade-off uh, to give them a little limp for the rest of their lives. So, 
Try it out, guys. As someone who knows knee pain, I believe those kicks should be discussed as a potential illegal move. Matt Mitrion should definitely be aware of this option. Otherwise, he wouldn't end up like this. It's not a hematoma. Mitrion suffered multiple eye pokes that led to impossible swelling of his eye. If a guy has a bad eye poke, right. I, would, I would say that's probably the worst out of all these things. Yet, what's an eye poke compared to losing a whole eye? Michael Bispin was still trash talking with our Belfort, even during the final stare down. You are a fucking pussy. Look at the state of you. Yet, things took a never before seen turn. Bispin suffered a detached retina in his right eye from a vicious head kick. Despite losing vision in that eye, Bispin continued his career, passing all the medical exams. How did you pass this test? With great difficulty. Lying, cheating, bullshit codes. Even reaching the UFC middleweight belt. Sage Northcutt was once predicted to hold the same belt, but fate had other plans. He suffered a devastating defeat, resulting in one of the most impossible injuries in MMA. Sage is very good, but these kind of losses are terrible for his future. And not only future career, but also for his future health. A first round KO left him with multiple facial fractures, including a broken orbital bone, nose and cheekbone. Let's turn our attention to the injuries that are so obvious you don't need to be a doctor to spot them. Blake Perry entered the fight for just his second professional MMA fight, but he took on too much by facing Marcel McCain. The result was brutal. Perry sustained a broken nose that appeared to have turned 90 degrees, yet they still agreed to continue the fight. Look at that, they're gonna let it go. And they are gonna let I it love go. it. However, his namesake, Mike Perry, suffered an even more horrific broken nose. While exchanging powerful strikes, Perry's nose was a brutal smash, bending 90 degrees to the right before snapping back. After this career-defiant performance, Perry delivered a line that should be carved in a stone. And look, I ain't trying to be one of these guys asking for more money. I'm not. I'm asking for the government to stop taking so much of this. A guy who took less than he expected is Alistair Overeem, who dominated the fight for nearly 25 minutes. And that nearly is as important as hell. Just four seconds remaining, he was ahead on the scorecard when he was caught by a powerful strike from Rosenstreak, resulting in a KO and one of the most graphic injuries in MMA. Healing in just a few days, thanks to beef, is really incredible. I like beef. Beef makes you strong. Continuing with the heavyweights, seven foot tower Steven Struve was caught with a brutal right hand from Mark Hunt, instantly fracturing his jaw. The injury was so severe that Struff struggled to continue, clearly in pain and disoriented. To make matters worse, the hospital discovered another issue. Uh, I was born with a heart defect and that I'll be here for the rest of my life. The widow is styled like UFC events, so I'm showcasing the main card. Injuries that will stay with the fighters for the rest of their lives. Alan Patrick's nasty injury wasn't done in a heated fight. It was made in a casual training. I was training and was hit by a knee. I was using a mouth guard, but it hit the bottom of my mouth. I have never been hit by such a knee before, even right into my chin. Now I will have to put a tightening plate on my chin for the rest of my life. Yet the majority of lifelong injuries can occur in just one fight. Things didn't go Renko 3's way. Just 40 seconds into the first round. Koroshkov landed a spinning kick that connected perfectly with Renkotri's ribs, causing him to collapse to the canvas. The result was five broken ribs, a punctured lung and bruised kidney. However, the most cruel lifelong injuries accumulate over many fights. Nam Pham is a prime example. Over the years, the decline in his speech ability has become apparent. This is me Nam Pham, uh, now with my uh, morning run. I did run five miles. Despite not having a promising career with over eight losses in recent matches and in the UFC, he likely served as a highlight reel for others. And the cost was his brain health. Unfortunately, he's not the only one.